Hey everybody, welcome back to Battle Ready Inc. So today's deck profile for you, we're going over Commandermon with the new EX3 support. And honestly, I'm like, I'm not even gonna sugarcoat it, but I'm also trying not to hype it up too much. But I think this might be the deck. If we're playing EX3 format for nationals, um, just because with their latest post, uh, they said EX3 wasn't gonna be uh, allowed for Ultimate Cup for the rest of the month. Uh, that gives me um, hope then that BT11 won't be available for Nationals because it releases the week before Nationals. Um, so if they're gonna play this same kind of scenario, we should be in EX3 for Nationals. And Commandermon is a beast of a deck. I mean, consistent beyond anything you could imagine simply because there's just so many. It's your basically playing black rookie rush um with some more extra added in text that can just essentially just turbo beyond belief and we'll get into it with the new ex3 support um like this deck was already super good and very competitive without the ex3 support but adding in all this new stuff like it just takes this deck to a whole nother level an absolutely scary terrifying deck to uh to deal with um so yeah let's go ahead and get into this also, our featured memory mark this month for Patreon is Poromon. Uh, if you are a fan of Adventure 2, got the you know the love for Hawkmon. This is just a really cute memory marker in general, though. I really do like this one. Got some nice little details. Even has the uh, the, the tail feathers there in the back. Uh, got the wings, got the beak. Very, very cute. Handmade out of clay by my wife. Uh, you can also find this on our Etsy store. Link in the description below. Uh, also there, you can find all of our previous memory markers that we featured on the channel in the past uh, if you want to pick up any of those all right so i've got the whole deck pulled up for you guys so you can follow along and just kind of see the the thought process of what we're working with um, a lot of this deck is kind of like straightforward like not anyone's going to have too much diversity, um, but then certain sections of it you will see uh, where the diversity ends. That's going to be towards the cards at the tail end of this. Um, I would say probably everything past Izzy is a kind of a flex spot of where you can go with the deck, depending on what you think you might be coming across and what uh, challenges you want to overcome that you think you might face with the deck. Um, so we'll go ahead and start off with the baby seer. Um, it's a it's a it's toss up, honestly. Missy Mon or the Pogu Mon. Um, Missy Mon here gives your D Brigade reboot. So if they swing into security and they survive, um, that's really powerful because then you can uh, unsuspend and your opponent can't just swing back over them. Now, a lot of times they do uh, do get deleted, um, but your idea of uh, targets to Evo in raising area is going to be these bigger four play cost ones, right? These are the ones that you want to either play for free uh, or you're going to Evo them in the raising area. So this 5,000 DP here swinging into security has an okay chance of actually making it. So, uh, you know, it's almost a 50-50 depending on the deck you're playing against. So being able to reboot and get a second swing out of that guy is very, very powerful. However, like we can't overlook Pogumon because just the on deletion will reveal the top card of your deck. And if it uh, is is a black Digimon card you can add it to your hand and the whole deck is, is black Digimon like except for defeat even um, Death X is black so you can actually add the Death X off of this as well which is really solid um, everything important in the deck you're going to be able to add um, my only issue is that sometimes when you do your when you stack the top of your deck, if you're familiar with Dark Dramon, Dark Dramon takes the Commander Mons in your trash and puts them on top of your deck. Um, if you do that, then yeah, you're gonna like mill a Commander Mon. But the issue is with that is when you flip it over and you add it to hand, that's less targets for you to be able to uh, play for free off of like your your Commander Mons, your and all your other stuff, your Tank Dramons. Um, so it kind of conflicts a little bit in an awkward kind of way but still at the same time uh with all the the free play that you do in this deck playing stuff for free you're you're actually surprisingly a little bit more limited on evo and draw power so if you're missing out on draw power in the deck and you feel like the draw power is more important definitely go with the pogumon as your four of instead of the missimon one of the techs i've seen is people running the the hagirmon so you can uh trash one cyborg in hand to draw two so you can actually trash a commander mon filling up your trash with uh commander mons for your dark Dramons and getting the the draw power to help go with it uh, my only issue is it's just on play i just kind of prefer not to on play as much as possible like the three stuff if i'm having a hard play stuff i'd rather it be tamers or pride memory boost you know something like that using my my turn for other things uh my memory for other things so uh yeah instead of hard playing rookies 
Um, I would just prefer not to hard play a rookie from hand if possible. Um, and so, of course, the bread and butter of the deck that kind of brings the whole thing uh, to light and actually makes it a really uh, like competitive deck is this Commander Mon here, the On Deletion Reveal the Top 3. You may play one Commander Mon among them without paying its memory cost. Uh, place the rest to the bottom of the deck. This is the this is your bread and butter right here. You want to continuously cycle this guy over and over. So you're gonna swing, have him get deleted, play out another commander mon, uh, and then when you get the opportunity to put your commander mons on top of your deck again from your trash, you want to be picking this guy up every single time. Every copy you have in trash, you want to put this one, uh, pick that one first. Like that's your this is your main one. Uh, you want to cycle every single time because uh, he's so powerful in the deck. Uh, we also have a vanilla here, two play cost, zero um, Evo. Uh, he, he's just an, he's just more filler for the deck here, not too bad. Uh, we've got the blocker one, which is actually pretty solid here. Getting to play this guy for free uh, just to kind of like help bolster your deck a little bit is really nice to have. Um, just a little bit of stopping power for your opponent, assuming they don't have like piercing or something like that. Um, just a, a little bit of extra padding for the for your deck there. Um, as well as just another commander mon target. Uh, we also have this one here. This is the four play cost I was talking about earlier. Zero Evo, so it's a, a good one to go into raising area with. Um, 5,000 DP though, is pretty solid. Um, uh, just, yeah, not much else to say. 5,000 DP on a rookie is, is always uh, pretty good. Can't complain there. Uh, and then the newest addition out of EX3 is the, uh, this new one is has decoy. So uh, for, for your D brigade here, you can um, use decoy and have this guy get deleted instead to protect all of your other things, which isn't too bad, honestly, um, especially if your opponent tries to like death X you because it's deck kind of likes to go wide uh you know you can pop this one honestly you could even possibly arguing running like ratios like this potentially uh like three and three there i just like this one because two play cost if i am going to hard play a rookie two play cost is the way to go um and that's just all there is to it really so uh easy to flood the board with two of these guys in one turn uh than necessarily it is to do it with uh, the three play cost ones um, and that's, that'll actually do it for our Commander Mon lineup. Actually, pretty massive here. Just going to switch these around because it's easier to math with. Uh, it's 18 rookies in total. Uh, pretty insane. Um, but, like, the rest of our package here actually makes a lot more sense. If you look, our level 6 package is kind of fat. It's it's 5, and you're like, well, you don't even have enough level 4s or level 5s to go on top of. Remember, these guys here, they're, they're on play. You're not going to ever digivolve this Dark Dramon. Uh, so you're only actually going to have two that actually did evolve. Um, so our first big new addition to the deck is the EX3 Sildstrom on here. The jamming is sure, fine, whatever, but really 100%, it's all about this inheritable. This inheritable is what kind of breaks the deck. And what made the deck good before was just that it could continuously replace itself with Commander Mons. Uh, this Sildstrom on now makes it absolutely absurd um so when you play another digimon with debrigade in its traits that digimon gains rush for the turn oh my god <laughs> so now with this inheritable now every time our uh, our original commander mon here gets deleted uh and plays out another copy of himself you know whichever of the commander mons that commander and mon that has rush you can immediately go in again uh if you if you go through all of these somehow some way you hit this every single time um i mean that's game i mean that's literally just game right there on board you swing four times with these guys and uh whatever the fifth card is and then you swing for game with uh, the seals drum on whatever you vote on top of it and that's literally game in one turn um like i'm not saying that's gonna happen but i mean it it is a scenario that could come up um uh, I did also include just this other Seals Ramon here, uh, mainly for the typing. It's another D Brigade that we can play off of, uh, that we can use with some other effects that we've got here. He's also a blocker, so not too bad there, 6,000 DP blocker. Um, just again, for those knee situations where you need to hold off your opponent, like really good in the mirror match for uh, fending off your opponent from just clearing your security too quickly. Um, so I just went ahead and dropped him in here. And then our other big new addition for the deck is the new EX3 Tank Jermon. Uh, this thing is absolutely incredible. So when Digivolving, reveal the top three cards of your deck. You may play one Digimon card with a play cost of five or less, which includes the new uh, or the old Silzermon and the new Silzermon. Um, uh, with D Brigade in its traits among among them without paying its cost, then trash the remaining cards. And remember, if you're digivolving this guy on top of the new Silstromon, that new target is going to have Rush. So whatever you play off of this uh, is going to immediately be able to attack, 
Very, very strong. Absolutely incredible, incredible card here. Um, and then it doesn't even stop there. The really nice part is it has a great inheritable of, like, normally the old tank Jermon is like, okay, you know, it was okay. You stuck it to the field. It would it would do all right. Um, it wasn't, like, the best um, because you couldn't really capitalize on its effect as much. I mean, with the new Seals Jermon, with that rush, it, the old tank Jermon is a little bit better. Um, but this one is super solid, just getting that guaranteed immediately when digivolving to get to uh, play something out. And then the inheritable here of your turn once per turn. When one of your Digimon with D-Brigade in its traits attacks, reveal the top two cards of your deck. Uh, you may play one Commander Mon among them without paying its cost. Trash trash the remaining cards. That's really interesting. Now, it's again, you're only revealing two, so you're not trashing a ton. Um, but the idea is to Evo on top of this guy and then attack. And then his own inheritable when you attack with your Dark Dramon that Evo's on top of this uh, will trigger this inheritable, play it out, and then it gets rushed from the Seals Dramon. It's just incredibly, incredibly efficient. Uh, flooding the field. But it's, what it's nice about the flooding the field is you're not, it's not like Bloom Lord where you're going super wide and making yourself a massive target for Death X um, because you're continuously like getting them deleted, right? So yeah, you, you flood the field a whole bunch, but then you immediately attack and they die. Um, so you never actually get this huge board. You just burn through an incredible amount of Digimon as well as burn through your opponent's security insanely fast. Um, and then so the Dark Dramon that complements this is the new e EX3 one. Uh, so five Evo cost is pretty steep. However, his ability here of uh, when one of your Digimon would Digivolve into this Digimon by returning up to five cards with D Brigade in their traits from your trash to the top of your deck for each card returned, reduce the Digivolution cost by one. So you return uh, five cards to the top of your deck with D Brigade from your trash. Um, he's a free Evo free evo right there and not only that but then you you can stack the top five cards of your deck with the exact order and commander mons that you want so then you immediately attack with this guy using the inheritable of the tank Dramon, so you know what the next two cards are so boom you immediately get one of those commander mons in play there off of this dark Dramon. so strong so 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 strong um, and then your turn, once per turn, uh, when you play another Digimon with D Brigade and Straits, delete one of your opponent's Digimon with a play cost lower than or equal to the played Digimon's play cost. Uh, and unsuspend this Digimon. I, I think just the unsuspend is the, the main <laughs> key factor here. Um, like, the chances of getting to delete something is low, but you don't have to delete something to get the unsuspend. You just need to play something to get the unsuspend. So play one of your Commander Mons, unsuspend, and then attack again with this guy. Uh, really, really solid stuff here. And I only went with two of it just because, again, we are only got the four level fives here. Um, you could almost even argue just playing one of this, but I don't like playing one ofs in a deck. Um, like ever if I can really help it unless it's limited um, to just kind of guarantees I see it every single game at some point whether that be at the very end of the game and immediately win off of it you know whatever the case may be and that's really what this is it's just a, another win condition for the deck to help you get there a little bit quicker and to like basically seal out the game Another one of those cards is the original Dark Dramon with this Rush. Again, the classic on play. You can run, turn up to five Digimon cards with D-Brigade and their types from your trash to the top of your deck in any order. Same as the other Dark Dramon. Uh, and then for each one, uh, gain two memory. Um, now, remember, he's a 13 play cost. So to do this, you have to be at three memory or higher. So then you put your opponent to 10... Um, and then you gain memory back. It doesn't reduce its play cost. You're gaining memory back. So don't play this when your opponent has a memory blocker out there or you're going to hate life. Um, but it is nice because there's so many uh, reduced play cost uh, like blockers out there stopping uh, Shoutmon decks as well as Death X from hitting the field that um, this actually dodging that is really nice because we don't see a whole lot of memory blockers currently being played. So it's nice to be able to bring this guy back. So three play cost rush, go into a mega and swing. Um, just another way to, to close out the game there. I am running three of this. You can almost uh, argue running two of it. Just kind of whatever your preference is. Um, I, I think they're both super solid. You can maybe bump the pride up. There's multiple different like ratios you can do here. Again, I don't recommend running ever one of, at least run two of everything that you can. Um, it just makes it a little bit more consistent that way. So you actually see those cards every single game. Um, because the chances of you getting to play more than two Dark Dramons in one game is like almost non-existent. Like you can go into one and then hard play the other and that's probably be about it. Um, you, you'll almost never see a three of these guys hitting the field. Any three combination of them. Um, just the, the game's going to be over before that ever happens, honestly. 
All right, and then Pride Memory Boost, uh, originally created for the Dark Knight deck, uh, actually works fantastic in this deck as well. So for play cost, reveal the top three cards of your deck. You may play one black Digimon card with a play cost of four or less among them without paying its memory cost. Trash the remaining cards. Then place this card in your battle area and delay game two. Um, what's really cool about this that I saw this in, in action here is, sure, you get a pick from all these different commander mods. That's great. For, for memory, probably going to pass turn. Um, so you're not really going to get to utilize any of this rush action, but, you know, being able to play back out a blocker or being able to play out this on deletion commander Mon again to get immediately get value out of him a second time, uh, like that's super good. But then in addition to that, um, when you try, I, I say that second value, um, it's, that's, it's not recycling from trash, sorry. Um, but you're revealing three, getting to play it out for free, basically instantly. Um, the thing that's really cool though, is that it trashes the remaining cards. So it fills up your trash with commander Mons extra quickly for your dark Dramon plays. And I think that's really cool is uh, filling up that trash for the dark Dramon plays is actually pretty, pretty awesome. I mean, you could maybe run a analog youth instead who's half the play cost of this. Um, but when you're, you get that memory back as well as um, you get the, the, whatever you pick up, you get it immediately play. I think that getting to play it immediately is gonna outweigh the analog youth. And just because a massive amount of our deck, uh, you know, we can hit off of this Pride Memory Boost, especially if you're stacking the deck with uh, Dark Dramont abilities or our Izzy here, our Memory Fixer of choice here. So if you're at two less game, uh, go to three. Um, then on play, reveal the top three cards of your deck. If all the cards revealed are black, they don't have to all be Digimon. Just as long as all the cards are black, gain one memory. So essentially that makes him a three play cost Memory Fixer, which is really great. He's the only one in the game like that. Um, like there's literally one card in the whole deck and it's the the zort defeat that isn't black so and there's only two of them you have a pretty solid chance of being okay so um really like the izzy there as well as again we're stacking the deck we get to see the next three cards we know what our draw is going to be on the next turn we know when to go for commander mon plays right we know when to get those on deletion abilities um it's like okay next three cards not a single commander mon okay we might want to draw a couple cards and then attack if we know our next you know three cards are uh you know three on deletion um commander mons here then you know you definitely want to start uh, trying to cycle in and getting those on uh filled super easily um i've got the kazu in here uh i saw this teched in in a recent in the the regional that i went to on saturday when i played against a commander Mon player uh my only draw for the day was against commander Mon. uh it was just crazy um they put up so much pressure i was having to recover the whole game um i but i couldn't put any counter pressure back on them uh end up tying in game three it was actually that close um but start of your main phase if you have a Digimon with Cyborg or Machine and its traits, gain one memory. Again, this is a start of main phase with one of those, so it's after you promote up, then you gain that memory. Really powerful in combination with stuff like Izzy. So Izzy will set you to three, and then the Kazo here will put you up to four. Uh, really, really good, um, like stacked uh, tamer combination there, um, as well as the all turns when one of your Digimon with Cyborg or Machine and its traits uh, becomes suspended, i.e. when you attack, or it could be when you block, it is all turns, uh, you may suspend this tamer to draw one, then trash one, um, again, like, if you're not running the Pogumons here, or you're not running the, um, the Hagirmon that gives you draws, uh, having the Kazu here for that consistency boost, very, very important just to make sure you're kind of cycling, you know, getting enough draws that you need to continue these plays. Um, in addition to that, you get a trash a card. So if you have like a whole bunch of commander mods and you're trying to get those five in trash for your dark Dramon plays, Kazu is a great way to do that. Uh, the opponent I played against, yeah, they dropped two dark Dramons in one game uh, simply because they were able to cycle so fast thanks to cards like Kazu as well as uh, Pride Memory Boost filling up their trash with those uh, commander mods, uh, making those dark Dramon plays come out. And then uh, moving on, so uh, actually had a decent amount of room. I could bump up the rookie count, but honestly, 18 is already a ton. Um, I don't really think we need more than that. Uh, maybe more testing. We'll, we'll have to see if we need to bump up this last Commander Mon here to a four of as well. Um, but just going for a little bit more tech choices here i got ultimate flare which has always been a really solid card that dd evolve three and then delete all your opponents did you want to play cost of three or less um like this is really good in the mirror match because a lot of them are you know all these rookies are, are pretty low play cost um 
as well as just other against other matches as well. Um, against Jessmon, you know, that D Digivolve is pretty huge. You can drop them down pretty far. Maybe not kill them, but you at least lower their, their impact uh, of what they're going to be able to do to you. And then also you get to clear out all of their blocks that they're going to have in play. Um, so Ultimate Flare, pretty good against that deck as well. Any of these go wide decks, um, also good against Bloom Lord. Just being able to uh, clear off all their rookies that they're going to play out for free against you. Uh, so, yeah, just really, really solid card here. Um, just to day two of, just to have that uh, the availability uh, available, <laughs> honestly. Uh, next, we got Iron Fisted Onslaught. Delete all your opponents Digimon with the highest play cost. Um, we have no way of removing Death X. Um, if our opponent sticks a Death X against us, it is a nuisance and a half to deal with. Iron Fisted Onslaught just deals with Death X. Uh, it's the most popular card in the game. Uh, it's the most expensive regular set card in the game. That's not just like a special alt art, right? Uh, like the, the Alpha Mon and the Omni Mon, right? Uh, if you're not counting those guys, uh, Death X is the most expensive card in the game uh, because he's used in every single deck in the game. Uh, so you need a way to out it. And honestly, Iron Fisted Onslaught is probably the best choice that you're going to have. There's literally nothing going to be on the field that's going to have a higher play cost than Death X. If they have two Death X, awesome. Iron Fisted will pop both of them just like that. Um, so yeah, two of Iron Fisted as well, just to have that versatility there. Uh, I'm all about it um, for sure. So really like the Iron Fisted Onslaught. Um, something where my list kind of differs from a lot of other people was I'm including Zwart Defeat. I was talking to one of my testing partners. He was saying he's going to run Nanemon as a security Digimon, the three, uh, three play cost one or its security gets to play it for free. Um, Seeing Zork defeat used actually blew my mind uh, when I played against this deck because Dark Dramon, like once they do their thing, right, they're just a big level six body that's not like giving you any sort of value. Um, so digivolving a Zork defeat on top of it for only three play costs and then getting to pop a tamer, such good value there. Three play cost, or I mean three Evo cost on a uh, useless level six uh, to pass turn and pop a tamer. Good value there. And if your opponent wants to deal with the the Zwart defeat, um, then it gets to delete something, right? So if they're going to delete it, uh, one of the plays was uh, I had a Death X on field and they went into uh, their Dark Dramon, swung, it survived. They Evoed into defeat, popped one of my uh, my tamers there. I think it was my Memory Fixer Kari. Uh, and then my Death X force the delete of the defeat and uh, then defeat pop my death x so they got so much value out of uh such little memory right a three play cost art Dramon, uh, and then a three evo defeat and they got to security check uh they got to delete a tamer and they got to clear my death x um yeah for all of that just and they got to draw for uh, for the evo um, there's a lot of good value there. So yeah, getting hit in security is always fantastic. Um, but actually in this build, he's actually just as good in the hand, uh, drawing into him as he is getting hit in security. So really actually digging the defeat in this deck. Uh, of course we got the two death X. I've already talked about how great this card is and why it's so important. Uh, it just clears fields, uh, clears those big wide fields really easily. If you don't have the ultimate flare, uh, playing out the death X will also get you the job done. Uh, and then two Grumble Mon. Uh, we've got a decent chunk of Tamers here. You know, three Memory Fixers and the multiple Kazus here. Uh, hybrid for game. I mean, any deck that's super aggressive and just trying to win as fast as possible often likes to work in a... And that runs uh, several Tamers, likes to also incorporate, um, you know, a hybrid if they have the space. Um, so, yeah, Grumble Mon. Just the two of here, just so we can at least see one of them. If I can see one Grumble Mon and just have it sit in my hand all game until I'm ready to win, it works for me. Uh, or if my opponent hits an Izzy, like say I play an Izzy, and then they hit one in security, so I've got two Izzy's, sure, I'll go ahead and Evo my Grumble Mon on top of one of those Izzy's, like mid game, and just swing into security with it. Sure, why not? Um, and that'll do it for the deck. 50 cards there. Um, I don't know what else to say. This deck is just absolutely insane. Um, I'm hard considering taking it to Nats. Um, we'll have to see. I mean, we're, Nats is still several months away. We're like three months out. Um, but like right out the gate, as far as first decks I want to test, um, I know Garuru X is really good. Like there's no question that Garuru X is, is a solid deck of choice. But I think Commander Mon... Um, might be just as good as it, and it's like literally less likely to brick because we just we're just playing rookie rush, right? Um, so uh, th it does have some weaknesses, though. There are weaknesses here, um, like a uh, a big blocker or like a Magnamon X. 
uh, could be a bit of an issue. Now, granted, we do have stuff like Ultimate Flare as well as Iron Fist Onslaught. So Ultimate Flare against that is super good because you're going to de digivolve it by two, throw it back into its Vmon state, and then Ultimate Flare will pop it. So Ultimate Flare, great way to deal with uh, Magnemon X. So I feel really solid um, about the include of Ultimate Flare because that is a huge hard counter to this deck. So being able to deal with that, I think, is huge. Um, that is like the biggest hard counter I could see uh, for this deck would be a Magnemon X. And you take care of that. Um, and then what else is there besides like, you know, maybe uh, Black War Green One that gets like a double block. Anything that gets, you know, multiple blocks in one turn. Uh, again, Ultimate Flare handles those really nicely as well. As well, of course, as Iron Fist Onslaught. Uh, if I missed anything or any ideas, any weaknesses, or any other text that you think is like super busted in this deck, please put it in the comments section below. I'd love to hear them because um, I'm really trying to think hard on this deck and long and hard on if I should take it to Nats or not. So definitely let me know what you think.